You've probably heard of the work smarter and not harder philosophy from a particularly notorious MCAT ad on YouTube. And as annoying as it is, this approach is truly the best way to navigate the MCAT. Now you might be wondering, what exactly does it mean to work smarter? And to me personally, I think it can be simply stated as the idea of not making the same mistake over and over again, whether it be an incorrect approach to a particular type of question or confusing the different parts of the Krebs cycle. In this video, I'm gonna help you do that through the concept of self-reflection. Arvin from MCAT Mastery here, and I use self-reflection in my journey on the MCAT to ultimately help me score in the 94th percentile on test day. Essentially, this entails being extremely mindful of all your prep and understanding the why behind all your mistakes. For example, if you keep mixing up convex and concave lenses, you need to ask yourself, is it because you're just having a bad day or is it because you know you don't understand the difference and all this time you've just been trying to jam it in your memory with the hopes that it'll possibly stick? That was me during prep at one point. Or if you keep missing reasoning beyond the text questions in cars, is it because you're pressed for time or you just don't know where to look for the answers to these types of questions? So how do you go about being self-reflective in prep? From a micro to macro scale, it entails first reflecting on every piece of content you've reviewed and every practice question you've completed. Second, compiling those reflections into a daily reflection. And third, compiling these daily reflections to track your trends and common mistakes that you find. If this sounds complicated, don't worry, I'll break it down for you and show you how to do it at every level, so stay tuned. Let's address the first stage first and start with content review. Definitely check out our other video on how to use Anki for content review, as this approach allows you to continuously reflect on your understanding. Let's pretend that you just learned about concave and convex lenses from the example earlier. Personally, these were one of the hardest topics on the MCAT for me because I kept mixing them up and didn't have a good way to remember the two. First, quiz yourself. Ask yourself questions about the differences between the two. Then, you want to stop and think. Okay, did I completely understand that? Was I unsure about anything in particular? Maybe I called the wrong one convergent. At that point, you want to ask yourself, how am I going to make sure that I don't mix them up again? So for me, this was to make a simple trick to remember the two. So I'd be like, oh, convex starts with C-O-N-V, so it has to be convergent. And then boom. I don't have any issues. I, I remember the difference between the two and I'm not gonna make that mistake again. On the other side, if you just disregarded it as a silly mistake, chances are you're gonna make that mistake again. Now, in terms of practice questions, it is crucial that you keep a spreadsheet to track all your mistakes while also tracking why you're missing those questions and what kinds of questions in particular that you're missing. Let's take a quick look at how I organized my spreadsheet to ensure that I did that. So here we have our spreadsheet and you can note that there are different, multiple different categories. And I think one of the most important ones that can sometimes go overlooked is this column right here, the what mistake column. So what you're able to do with this column is categorize your mistakes. And why is that important? Well, you're able to see, like for example, if in your section you're missing mostly content questions, then you can decide, okay, I need to go over content again and review all this stuff. If you're making mostly misunderstanding questions, you can say, okay, that means I understand the content and my issue now is dealing with questions in particular. So let me make sure that I'm practicing similar questions like that and being active on how I do that. Then your oof questions are those ones that we all make that we're just like, oh my goodness, how did I make that mistake? Um, so that's that category to see like, am I making a lot of silly mistakes on things that I shouldn't be making mistakes on? Um, and so you can see the ratio of those. So this is a very important column. And then you have your concept and so you'll know which one to exactly go over. Then, you know, pretty general, your thought process, the correct answer, why it's correct, why you were wrong. Um, this stuff is pretty common, but strategy for next time is extremely important because it gives you kind of a call to action, right? So you now have all this information here, but this column lets you say, okay, now that I know all this from getting this question wrong, what do I do now? And what do I do to prevent myself from making this mistake again? So in this case, I didn't really understand negative controls that well at that point. And so I 
went back and studied controls. What's the difference between a positive and a negative control? Here, I wasn't sure about gels. I was kind of confused by the gels that were shown and I did practice. You know, here I was just like, you just gotta read carefully. So this column is very important for your call to action of what exactly you're supposed to do. So um, I hope that helped. Then you wanna take all the prep, content reviews and practice questions both and fit it into a daily reflection. I had a column in my daily schedule spreadsheet for this reflection, and basically it would just be a couple sentences about my day of prep. I would discuss mistakes that I made, content that I reviewed, and most importantly, how I felt during my prep during the day. Did I just feel like a waste man clicking through YouTube videos, or did I feel like I was in my zone that day? A common thing that I hear students say when I meet them for tutoring is, oh yeah, I, I didn't get through much today, um, I don't know what was wrong. You need to ask yourself, why? Why did you not get through many questions? Was it because you were stumped on a particular piece of content and went on a side mission to figure out what exactly that content was? Or did you run into a particular question type that you struggled with? If you don't review these things on a day-to-day -day basis and put them down on paper or on your computer, they will slip into the void never to be seen again and you'll keep making those mistakes over and over again. Let me show you how exactly I organize it on my spreadsheet here. So this was the scheduling template that I used. So, um, you know, you have your goal here, you're accomplished. Um, and we talked about that in another video, but this reflection tab is where we're really focusing. So if, for example, um, you know, you decided you wanted to do lenses, you know, a particular day, lenses, um, you could say, oh, I accomplished learning the difference um, between concave and convex lenses, right? And then here you can talk about, I, you know, you can say like, I initially was struggling with identifying the difference. I couldn't make it stick in my head. And then I decided C O N V in convex lenses means it's convergent. And so I have a little hint there. And then you can then say like, I feel like I am solid in this material. So now what you have is an active reflection on what you did that day. And of course, you're probably gonna do more um, in a particular day. And so you would just sum up, you know, all the things that you did that day, you know, practice questions that you did, if you did some cars passages, how you did on those and how you felt on those. And so you're able to really reflect on that and say two weeks passed by and now you're in August, there's no way of you knowing what exactly you did in July unless you're writing things like this down. So um, this is where it can be very, very helpful. What you'll then realize is that you now have a way of tracking what exactly you did on particular days. So say last week you wanted to rip your hair out whenever you had a passage talking about fluids, but now you consider yourself somewhat of a fluids god and you can track your progress and make the realization that you're actually getting somewhere with your prep. Or if you struggled with finishing cars passages on time one week and you continuously tracked your progress and how long it took you to finish them, then one day you'll be able to happily say that it is no longer as much of a struggle and you'll be able to see how long that took you. In conclusion, I can't stress how important it is to be actively reflective on your prep or else you're gonna find yourself re-reviewing things over and over again, ultimately wasting really, really precious time. But as a whole, we know how hard this journey can be. There's just so much material to know and we weren't taught this stuff in school. We were never taught the high yield learning tactics that are needed for a test of this nature, but we know that you can do it. We were in your shoes once and as hard as it is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Our team of tutors and I here at MCAT Mastery have learned a lot from the process and we've put together a step-by-step -step MCAT strategy video course to show you how exactly to apply a lot of high yield learning strategies to increase your score to the top score level, like we were able to. It's just a super comprehensive system to master the MCAT, complete with strategies for every section, as well as strategies for retakers and non-traditional students and more. I wish we had something like this when we were going through prep. Um, so if you're interested in this, I will link it down below. Um, along with a lot of our other free resources too. We're also available for one-on-one -on -one tutoring if you feel like you need someone there with you through your journey. Anyways, make sure you stay reflective throughout your prep and I wish you the best of luck. You got this.